Hey guys, welcome back to another Godo Python MMO tutorial. This is part two in the series, so if you haven't seen part one, I definitely recommend checking that out. Part one includes all of the infrastructure set up, but in this part, I promised we would be setting up the database and adding some extra features to our chat room, such as a login, registration, and allowing uh, all the users to see the usernames of who they're chatting to. So here I have uh, sort of the final product of what we'll get at the end of this video. So you can see I have two game windows open right now and I can log in to the one on the left. And then I could maybe make an account for the one on the right. It says this username is already taken, so maybe we'll try test two. And registration successful. You can also see that if I get my password wrong, it won't let me in. But then if I fix it up, then I enter the chat room. And then I can send a chat message and it says, test two says hello. And then I can say, hi there. So yeah, that's what we'll be uh, getting at the end of this video. So let's get stuck into it. And as always, if you come on over to the official GitHub repository, if you click this releases button, you can start uh, with a fresh code from the end of lesson one. So if you download this uh, source code from the end of lesson one release, that will give you everything that you need to start this lesson. So all you need to do is download the zip folder, unzip and merge it in with your virtual environment folder that you should have from the previous lesson. And then you should have everything you need to, to follow along. And just one last thing, if you want to follow along, uh, I'll have the Godo Python MMO part two blog released by the time of this video is released. So you can just come to tbat.me slash posts, and then you can just find the part two link. And so you can follow along, copy and paste some code. So we're gonna start working on the server first to set up the database. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code, click file, open folder, and then come to your project directory that you made at the very beginning of the last lesson and just open that up. As before, I'm going to right click on server on the left and then click open in integrated terminal. And we should see that we already have our virtual environment loaded if we uh, followed the step from the last lesson about letting Visual Studio Code know about our virtual environment. So you should have this .vs code folder with this in the settings.json. But just in case you don't have it automatically loaded, you can just run the, the command dot slash venv slash. And then if you're on Windows, it will be scripts. But if you're on Mac or Linux, it will be bin. And then just activate. So if you run that command, you should see the green virtual environment prompt. And just a quick note from here on out, uh, I'll probably stops adding the disclaimer about the Windows and non-Windows systems. Uh, and I'll probably also just um, always assume that you are uh, running from an activated virtual environment in the server folder. So in order to set up the database, uh, the first thing that we need is a couple new files in the server folder. So right click server, new file, and we're going to call this one manage.py. And this is going to serve as sort of a management script to help us uh, keep our database maintained. And the next file that we're gonna need is just, uh, we're going to call it models.py and we'll also save this to the server folder. We're also gonna need a new folder inside server. So right click server, new folder, and we're gonna call this migrations. And just inside the migrations folder, we need one file called underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. So this init.py file will stay blank. We just need it uh, in order to uh, set up the initial database. It needs to be there for this manage.py script to work. Inside manage.py, we're going to add the following script and this will be available to copy and paste from my blog. But you can see that this is just sort of a bunch of very specific things that that we need for Django. So if you follow any sort of Django tutorial on how to set up a database, you'll probably find something like this. Um, so it's very sort of uh, standard code. But one thing to note is that uh, we have a databases dictionary. Here we're specifying the engine to be SQLite 3, which I have chosen because it doesn't require any new packages. 
but you can choose other database engines, but you may need to install additional packages with Python. And uh, we're just specifying that this database will be put into a file in our server folder called db.sqlite3. Moving on, uh, so now that we have our manage.py script, the very first thing we need to do as soon as we enter our program is to import manage.py. That means that we need to co go to our underscore underscore main.py file and literally line one needs to be import manage. If it's not, then the database script will never get run and the database will never be loaded, it'll never be created, and uh, Python will just always complain at you. So make sure that line one of main.py is import manage. So next let's, uh, let's open up models.py, and in this file we're gonna specify all of the database models. So in our database we'll have tables, and then these tables will have columns and rows. So each table more or less represents a model in our game. So like a user or an entity, a player, and then all of the columns in our database, these will be our fields of our model. So I can show you an example. So the very most basic model that we're going to need for this video is called a user. So you can see just line one, we're importing models from Django so that we can subclass this base model. So yeah, we're, co we're creating a user model and it just has two fields, a username, and a password. And you can see you can do things like specify unique equals true if you don't want people to be able to register the same username and you can have max length and things like that. As we continue uh, creating our game and expanding the game, we'll be coming back to this models.py file a little bit, um, but for now we're finished with this. We're nearly finished with creating our database. Uh, just the final step is to use our manage.py script to actually create the database and we're going to do what's called running the initial migration which just means that uh, Django will look into our models folder and it'll create all of the necessary tables. So the first script to run in into our terminal here is is python manage.py make migrations. Make migrations is all one word. We press enter and you should see migrations for server uh, created model user. And then you should also see our migrations folder has uh, a 0001 initial.py in it. And this is the code generated by our script to create our first table. You can also see we have a db.sqlite3 file and this is our database that we've just created. So now that we've made the migrations, we need to actually migrate. So the next script is python manage.py migrate. And now you can see applying the first initial migration, okay. And that should be our tables created. So now that we've successfully set up our database, uh, we can store users, usernames, passwords. Uh, generally storing passwords is a very bad idea, uh, but in the future we can definitely look at uh, a more secure way of, of uh, verifying that users know their passwords without actually storing them in the database. Uh, but for now, um, we're not releasing our game to anyone, so it's okay to continue for now. So now we're just going to be adding some new packets. We're going to need some new packets uh, to handle sort of the like the login and registration logic. So uh, come on into packet.py, and we're going to add a couple new actions into our action enumerator. So we're adding uh, these four new actions, OK, Deny, Register, and Login. And all of these actions will get assigned to the same value of enum.auto, which just automatically assigns it a number in our class. So the OK packet will be uh, to tell the user that they're OK to proceed or that they've done something correctly. Um, so depending on the, the context, depending on the state, uh, this could mean different things, but uh, we'll see how that works in a minute. And then likewise for the deny packet, this one will tell the user that they can't do something. So for example, if they try to log in, but they have the wrong password, then they will get a deny packet. And then it's up to the client to interpret what that means. Beyond that, we also have the register and login packets, and we'll see what they do in a minute. So let, let's scroll down to a nice place to put all of our new packet classes. So maybe just underneath the chat packet here. Starting with the OK packet, it's the most basic packet uh, because it doesn't even contain any payloads. So we're just straight up inheriting from the base packet class. And then in the constructor, we just call the base packet class with 
uh, the OK action. That's about as simple as it gets, but maybe a close contender for the most simple packet will be our deny packet. So very similar idea, we're inheriting from packet, but we also have one payload, which is which is a reason. So this would be the reason that uh, whatever action was denied. And then we just call the, uh, the, the parent constructor as always. And then finally, we have the last two packets that we're defining today. We've just got the login and the register packet. And note that these packets are exactly identical except for the action. And the best way to really distinguish these packets will be from context. So we'll get into that in, in just a bit. But again, you can see how straightforward it is to uh, just define new packets on the fly. Maybe we'll also see how easy it is to add some new states to our protocol. So yeah, let's head on over to the protocol.py file and uh, we just need to import our models real quick so that we can actually um, get some information about some login or register packets. So just wherever you like at the top here, uh, we're going to type uh, from server import models. And then we're going to want to keep track of our user. Um, so inside the uh, game server protocol constructor, we're just going to add a line of code at the end. Um, so we're saying self.user, which is a user model. And we're just setting that to be none to begin with. So now we're going to set up a login state. So we already have a play state, so we're making a new one. So I'll just put this underneath our play state. So it's a function, so login, and it has the same signature as all the other states uh, because it, it gets called the same way in the tick function. As always, we have the sender and then we have the packet that we're, that we're trying to interpret. So within the login context, the only two packets that we're interested in reading is the login packet and the register packet. So you'll notice that we're not checking for any other type of packet because we're not expecting it in the context of our state. So this is kind of what I was hinting at uh, in the previous lesson. The state machine is really quite powerful because uh, if someone sends you a packet that you're not expecting, you just don't even look at it. So it's, it's a bit of a security feature as well as a simplicity feature. Well, so let's start with the uh, register packet lo logic. We know that we're expecting a uh, register packet, which means that the payloads contain a username and a password. So we can just unpack that here. Username and password is the payloads. And then the next most logical thing to do is to check to see if the username already exists in our database, because we don't want to allow someone to register if the username is already taken. So in Django, the way that you do that is you say, if models.user.objects.filter, and then username equals, and then this username is the same as this one. So maybe slightly confusing, but if this was just named uname, then we'd be checking if models user object filter username equals uname. Uh, and then we just put the dot exists function. So we're just checking to see if there is an object in our users table uh, with the same username as the one that came in with the register packet. So if that is the case, then we want to send a deny packet and say that you can't register because the username is already taken. So here we're using our self.send client function, which sends the packet directly to the client. So it doesn't need to broadcast this because it's only concerned with, with the client that, that's connected to the protocol. So then what do we want to do if the uh, username isn't already taken? So we're going to add an else statement here. So this will be the case that the user is allowed to register. So in this case, we're going to create a new variable called user, and we're going to make it an object of our models class user. And we're setting the username equal to the same username that came in with the packet, and the password is the same as the password that came in with the packet. And I'm just going to quickly change my username variable back. There we go. So we have this user object now. So what do we want to do with that? Well, we want to save that to the database. So we can type user.save, and then that will write that to the users table in our database. 
And then at the very end, we just want to tell the client that everything's okay to proceed. So we'll send an okay packet. Well, that's the uh, registration logic sorted. Next, moving on to the login logic. It's going to be very similar to the registration logic. So which, the first thing we're going to do is just give names to our payloads that we're expecting. And then what we want to do is we want to check that the username exists in the database firstly, but also check that it matches the same password that came in through the login packet. So we can do that like this. So we say if models.user.objects.filter, so this time we're doing username equals username, but we're also doing password equals password. So this line of code is very similar to this line of code, but note that here we're also checking the additional requirement that the password must match with an existing user in the database. If that is the case, then uh, we'll grab the user from the database with our uh, Django get method. So because username is unique, we can use get with username equals username. And we're just saving that to our self.user member variable that we declared up here. So now we're giving this some value. The next thing we want to do after we grab the user is we just want to tell our client that it's okay to pr proceed. So the client will know that it's okay to log in. And then we're going to change our state to self.play because once we've logged in, then we want to move into the game. And then we want to start looking for chat packets. So we've written the logic for if the user gets their uh, username and password correct. Um, but if they get it wrong, then obviously we're just going to send a deny packet telling them that either their username or password is incorrect. So that's it for our login state. We only check for the two types of packets and we just uh, handle the logic accordingly. So I guess the last thing that we want to do right now is at the moment, our on open function, which we're overriding from the twisted WebSocket server protocol, we're setting our self.state uh, to play, but we, we want it to be login the very first time we connect to the server. We want the state to be login state. So we'll just change that play to a login and then save our protocol.py file. So believe it or not, that's all we need to do on the server side of things. So we're gonna hop on over to Godo now and create a login scene. So I'm just going to open up Godo. Remember in the last part, I downloaded the latest version, uh, just this executable. So I can just double click that again to open it up. And I'm just going to open up my client project that we set up as well. So we're going to add a new uh, scene to our project. So we're just going to right click this res folder down here in the file system, and then just click new scene. And we're going to call it login and then OK. So in this scene, uh, it's going to be a user interface scene. Uh, so we're going to start with the user interface control node. We're just going to rename this to login. So underneath our login node, we're going to create a canvas layer as we usually do for UI elements. And then inside the canvas layer, we're going to make a VBox container. And then inside this VBox container, We'll make a grid container. Also inside the VBox, we'll make a center container. Inside the grid container, we're going to add four things. So we're going to have two labels. We're just going to rename these labels real quick. So this first one will be called label underscore username. And this second one will just be called label underscore password. Let me just expand this a bit. So also in our grid container are going to be two line edit fields. And we just want to make it so that one of them goes in between the two labels and we'll rename these to line edit username and line edit password. So in our grid container, we should have label line edit label line edit. So in our center container, we're going to have a HBox container. And inside the HBox container, we're going to have two buttons. Rename the first button to button login and the second button to button 
underscore register. So now we have all of the UI elements that we need for our login scene, but you can see that everything is just clumped together in the top left. So we just want to fix that. So for our two line edit nodes, we want to select them. On the right hand side inspector, we'll scroll down to size flags and then just select expand under horizontal. We'll do that for both our line edits. So now we want to come to our VBox container node and then select anchor from the inspector and then set left to be 0 0.2, top will be 0 0.4, right will be 0 0.8, and then bottom is 0 0.6. Select margin and then just reset this bottom and right to zero. So you can see that this centers everything nicely within our screen. So next, let's just come on to our grid container and we want to specify that it has two columns. And then this will allow us to uh, type something into these, into these labels. So as you can probably guess, the label username, uh, this text is going to be username. And then likewise, the label password text will just be password. And then you can probably guess the button texts as well. So the login button will get a text of login. And then the register button will get a text of register. And that's it. That's all we need for our login scene. So we can save this. And then you can see that it's created a login.tscn file for us here in our file system. So now we want to add some script to our login scene. So we'll come into the root login node, right click, and then click attach script. Leave the path as login.gd and click create. And then we'll just get rid of uh, most of this code here. So we're just going to declare um, a bunch of our sort of references to nodes that we have created. So we've got the username field, password field, and then the two buttons. And we're just using the get node function to specify the path to um, all of these nodes. So the line edit username node lives underneath the canvas layer and then underneath the VBox container and then inside the grid container. And then likewise for all of these references that we need to use in the script. We're going to declare two signals that this login script is going to emit. So we're going to have a login signal and a register signal, and then our main script can pick up on these signals and process them. So just in our ready function, we're setting our password fields secret attribute to true. So this just makes it so that when you type into the password field, you can't see what you're typing it. It will just be represented by asterisks. And then we're simply connecting our button signals to uh, some functions that we're going to declare in this file. So when you click the login button, it will fire our login function. And then speaking of these functions, here are our login and register functions. And all that these do is simply emit the signals that we specified up here. And we're just grabbing the text from the username and password fields. So that's it for our login script. It's very simple. Uh, it's basically just when you click on buttons, it will emit the appropriate signal uh, and it will use the text that you've entered as uh, information in those signals. So we'll save that script. So now we're ready to tie everything together. So I'm just going to close this login scene. And now I'm looking at my main scene. At the moment, we already have our chat box in our main scene, but we would rather have the login scene uh, at first, and then we can instance the chat box scene after we've actually logged in. So I'm just going to right click this chat box node and then come down to delete nodes. And this will just delete the node from the main scene tree. We're not actually deleting the scene or anything like that. So we'll just click okay. And now we just have the main root node again, all on its own. Now we're just going to add our login scene so we can grab our login.tscn from the file system and drag it on top of our main root node. And then suddenly we have our login screen visible from our main scene. So we can save our main scene now. 
And now we just need to edit the main script. So we can open up main.gd. And notice that we had an old reference to our chat box, but we just want to change this to be a reference to our login screen. So we'll change this onready var chat box to onready var login screen. And we'll set this to get node login. Since we removed our chat box reference uh, from this code, we still need a way to reference the chat box scene so that we can make an instance of it once we log in. So just under here where we've got their const uh, declarations, we'll just add uh, const chat box equals preload chatbox.tscn. And then this will allow us to create an instance of our chat box later. We also just want to keep track of our chat box. So we'll just save a, uh, a variable called chat box and we'll just set that to null for now. So in our ready function, uh, we're just going to connect a couple handlers to the signals that can be released from our login scene. So we're just uh, connecting our login screens, uh, login and register signals to some handlers. So handle login button and handle register button. So sort of like what we did in protocol.py, our first state is not gonna be the play state anymore. We're actually just gonna set it to null for now because depending on what the user clicks on, whether they click on register or login, we wanna set the state to either a login state or a register state. So in Godot, we're actually gonna have a distinction between those two states. We didn't have that in protocol.py, but it's more convenient to have a little bit more finer distinction in the Godot side of things. So we're talking about our handler functions, but we haven't declared them yet. So let's just do that now. So the first one is the handle login button. And we simply set our state to a login state and then we construct a login packet and we send that to our protocol. We send that to the server. Likewise, our handle register button function, we just set the state to register, construct a register packet, and then send that to the server. So now we need two more states. So we're going to define the register state first. So just underneath where we have our play state, we'll introduce the register state. And then we're matching our packets action. So if it's an okay action, then we'll just let us we'll just let the user know that the registration was successful, and then we'll just do nothing. So after the user clicks the register button, as long as they get an okay packet back from the server, they'll just have to log in with that use with that information then. Uh, but of course, if they get a deny packet, then uh, We'll grab the reason from the uh, packets payload. So there'll be a deny packet with a, a reason payload. And then we'll just show the reason to the user. Simple enough for the registration logic. So we're going to have the login state now. Again, we're just matching uh, what the packets action is. So again, we click login. If we get an OK packet from the server, then we're going to call this function called enter game, which we haven't defined yet, but as you can imagine, we're just gonna be getting rid of the login screen and we're gonna be introducing the chat box scene again. But of course we click the login button and we get a deny packet from the server, then we just wanna print the reason why we were denied. So for example, we got the, the wrong username and password. So just note we're using os.alert for now, uh, but in the future, it might be nice to pretty things up and make our own message box well, the last thing to do now is to define our enter game function. So let's do that here. So as you can imagine, the first thing we want to do is set our state to the play state. And then we remove the login node from our scene tree. And then we instance a new chat box node from our chat box scene. We need to connect the chat box's message sent signal to our own send chat function, which is down here. And then we add our chat box to the scene tree just underneath the main root node. So basically we are trying to restore the scene tree to what it was before in the last episode. That's it. So we can save everything now and we can try to test it out. So we'll just come into our Visual Studio code. And we can run our server with Python space dot. And we've already uh, created the database. So running our uh, Running our server should give us no errors, but if you do see an error, just make sure you remember to run uh, our manage.py make migrations and migrate scripts. 
So we can see our servers running. So we'll just come into Godot and click play. And I can see that we're getting a non-existent function connect in base nil. So let me just see what that's about. So I can see this uh, this line here, we're saying chatbox.connect in our ready function. But remember we set chatbox to be null to begin with. So this, that's my bad, I just forgot to uh, remove this line since we now, we now do this uh, connection in the uh, enter game function. So we no longer need it in the ready function. So you can just delete this line um, and this will be fixed up in the blog post, so you don't need to make the same mistake that I did. So I'll just save this and click this retry button. And you can see I'm being loaded into the registration screen, login registration screen, and it still says connected with protocol and client connected to server. And if we open up VS Code, we can also see that, uh, well, we have a WebSocket connection closed unexpectedly from before because I got the error in the client. Um, but this time we can see that the client connected and the uh, WebSock connections open. So let's try registering uh, for an account. So I'll just click register and it says registration successful. So you can see um, in the server side of things that the packet was queued. So it's a register packet with my uh, payload information. Once the server determined that my username was available in the database, it would have sent the client back an OK packet. So if we open up Godot, we can see in the log here. Uh, so first of all, we see sent string, that's our register packet. And then we see got data from server A OK. So this is just our OK packet. Once we received our OK packet, uh, we got this alert to say registration was successful. And then note, if I try to register again, this time I'll get a deny packet and it says this username is already taken. So you can see in the Godot logs, this is our deny packet that we got. So now I can just click login and I'm getting an error, uh, cannot convert type to bytes. So let me just see where that is. So there's just a slight error, um, which if you just copy from the blog, you wouldn't get this error because I'll fix it. But uh, I just made a mistake here where I need to have it open and close parentheses for my OK packet. So I'm not trying to send the actual class packet, I'm trying to send uh, the packet object itself. So I'll save my protocol.py. I'll just press Control C in this terminal window to close the server. We'll also see a disconnected unexpectedly message from our game. That's fine. I'll just run the server again. And then I'll just try to log in with my username and password that I registered before. And this time I got an okay response from the server. So as before, we can still have a chat. So I'm still sending chat packets and the server is still receiving these chat packets. So if I come back to Godot HTML5, I can try to get another register and I can try to see if we can still make sure the chat functionality is working. So I register as someone else and click login. And you can see it's still working as the same as before, but it would be really nice if we could see the username next to the message for whoever's talking. So that's not too difficult. So let's try to get that done now. So let's just come back to Visual Studio Code. I'll quickly stop the server. We need to add some more information to our chat packets so that it contains information about who sent it. So we'll come into packet.py, find our chat packet definition, and we're going to add an extra payload. So we're going to add a payload before the message payload, and it's going to be called sender. And it's also going to be a string. And then of course, in our parent classes initializer, we need to pass them our extra sender payload. Make sure you pass it in before the message payload. So that's our modification to our chat packet. So we can save that. We just need to edit um, everywhere that we're using a chat packet. We can see that in our protocol.py, if we look at the play state, 
This is the only place where we handle chat packets, but you can see that we just send the packet back to other protocols. Or we send the packet directly back to the client. So we're not actually unpacking any of the payloads. So all of the payload interpretation is done in Godot. So we can save um, our packet.py and open up Godot. And then here in the play function, this is where we are interpreting the payloads. So the message is not the first payload anymore. It's actually the second payload and the sender the sender is the first payload now so we just have to make that change there we'd also like to keep track of our username so that we can send that as a payload when we send a message in the chat so we'll come up to the top of the file and we'll just make a new variable called username so we'll just leave that undefined for now uh, we're going to actually define it in our handle handler for the login button. So when a user clicks the login button, uh, we'll set the username there. You're just at the very beginning of this function. We'll set username equals username. So now that we have access to uh, our username, once we log in to the chat room, we can start sending our chat packets with uh, the additional information. So we come down to our send chat function, and this is where we construct our chat packet. Our first, uh, what was our only payload was just the text for the chat box, but now we need to uh, also send our username. So we'll just insert our username variable before the text payload in this array. We also need to log our username to the chat box. So we might as well change our chat box add message function while we're at it to support the username parameter as well. Let's save our main.gd script and jump into our chatbox.gd script. And here we need to modify this add message function to support a new sender parameter. So let's type username, which is a string. So now this function expects the first argument to be a username string. And then we, we can just change the text that gets logged to uh, username says and then an opening double quote and then our message and then a closing double quote and a new line so we can save that now uh, let's start our server up again and we can test out so i'll log in with my user now if i type hello we should see tristan says hello and if i log in with my other account, get these side by side. So I can log in with my other account. I can say hello. And you can see it says someone says hello on uh, my side of the screen, but it doesn't get the message across to the other client. So I can also see that I've got a uh, an error in Godot right now. So let's see. Okay, so we forgot to change uh, the parameters that we supply to our chat box add message function when we are receiving a message from another player. So that's this here in our, in our play state when we're matching on the chat. Uh, so we need to actually pass in, so we need to pass in the sender to our chat box add message function here. Um, whereas previously we, we'd only done it when we actually sent a chat um, and we logged our own message for our own sake. But when we receive a chat, from someone else we need to also uh, do the same thing there so we'll save that and then try rerunning our game and here you can see if i say hello it shows up on both screens as before but now it also says the username of the person who sent the message so that's all working now and that brings this video to a close so I just want to say if you made it this far, congratulations, uh, especially if you made it through the first part uh, where we set up all of the pretty tough infrastructure. Um, and hopefully you found this part to be a little bit more relaxing uh, and a little bit more sort of practical. Um, I also just want to say thank you for watching the video to the end. It really means a lot to me. Uh, if you could also consider leaving a like and subscribing uh, to get some future updates into this project. Uh, that would be also very appreciated. If you got a little bit lost, um, don't worry. If you come into the official GitHub repository, you will see in the releases section, 
Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see there'll be an end of lesson two code. If you download the zip um, for the source code there, you'll get all of the code um, that we wrote in this lesson. Um, and you'll get a working version that you can start the next lesson with. Uh, if you still need help, then um, please don't hesitate to leave a YouTube comment or you can send me an email with the contact details that's in my blog. Um, and probably the best way is to join the official Discord. Uh, we still need some more members, but um, hopefully by the time you're watching this, there might be a few members that we can have a chat and uh, discuss each other's code and um, we'll just generally try to help each other out. Well, thanks again for watching. And uh, in the next lesson, we'll be moving towards our long-term goal, which is getting an actual working game up and running. So for the moment, we're pretty much finished our uh, glorified chat room, so to speak. Uh, and sort of all the hard work that we've been doing, especially in the last episode, uh, is going to really start to pay off in the next couple parts. So really stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for reading along with the blog as well. All right, take care.